Hello, everyone. Hope you're doing well. I wanted to bring to you the press conferences for both of the Britneys that we've been covering. And so the first one up, I put up the flyer so that you have a little better idea who it's going to be about, um, is Brittany Anderson Watson. She is the one that is 34 years old and has the husband. Um, and so there is um, some updates on that that I have to give you that are really pretty upsetting. And so I'm going to take you off of this and put you over. I'm going to show you if you remember that they had found the truck, her truck. Um, and I showed you pictures the other day. It's just a real short little segment here of someone walking. That's all that was, was just a real short one there. I don't know what the significance is exactly to the flat tire. I'm not sure what happened. I think it's going to take a bit to really put the pieces together on this one. All right, I'm going to show you this video. And then after this, I will put you on the press conference. Well, one woman who has been missing for more than a week is believed to be dead. This is according to the Haywood County Sheriff's Office. Now, Haywood County is about an hour outside of Memphis. Brittany Watson was last seen a little over a week ago on the 7th. The Sheriff's Office also believes her ex-husband, Kevin Watson, may also be dead. The sheriff said a note from Kevin and his cell phone were found in his truck. That note said, I'm going to make it easy for you guys. I think he regretted what he did. He realized he got out of control. I mean, that's he confided in a friend with this information. And that friend is, has been working with our investigators. So that's how we know a lot of this stuff. Well, because Brittany is believed to be dead and Kevin has not yet been found, the sheriff said a first degree murder warrant will be issued for Kevin. The sheriff's office asked anybody with any information about Brittany and Kevin Watson to call Haywood County Sheriff's Office. That number is 731 772-6158. So, yeah, that's pretty big. That's awful. So, at this point, they do consider that he likely did follow through with taking his life. So, that is that just shoots uh, getting any justice right out the window. Oh, it's terrible. But at least they've, they're issuing the first degree um the warrant for it if he is so a little bit about uh, what can you tell us so far well obviously you can see that we're still working the, the river and the area around the river uh we're using sonar equipment uh, special thanks to silver county sheriff's department for all their assistance with this um we haven't found anything uh they're just taking a break right now to get something to eat but they're going to go back out there and continue to work it uh we're checking to see if we can get a helicopter to fly over if this weather will cooperate with us for the rest of the day. That may be the case. Tomorrow's going to mess us up because of the bad weather they say is coming in. So we'll resume searching uh, somewhat uh, Friday. Uh, maybe t something totally different than what we've done already. Right now we've used sonar. Uh, we've used tracking dogs. We've used cadaver dogs. Uh, we've used TWRA. Uh, we use on the on the ground uh, uh, men, uh, boots on the ground uh, folks, uh, deputies, to check in uh, areas. Uh, we have used four wheelers, uh, side by sides. We've been pretty pretty thorough. Uh, we got a couple other places we'd like to really be satisfied in our minds that everything is okay and that he or she is not there. We we fully ex suspected that we would find something here today now as you know if anybody's very familiar with drownings and stuff like that especially in a river like this it takes several days if he's underwater before we know anything but uh, with the sonar if he's trapped under there that sonar will be able to locate his body and they have uh, ways to get the body back up out of the water so that's what we're attempting to do now uh, but we haven't had any of it, so so you're saying he, you're meaning Kevin Watson. Yeah, Kevin Watson is, what we're, is who we're looking for right here. 
Now, uh, over on Hillville Loop, I don't know if you guys have been over there where they live, 3317 Hillville Loop. Uh, that's where they live. Uh, we had some information. The investigation helped us with that, that, that she may be around there. And so uh, we, we feel certain she's deceased. Um, and so we have searched quite a bit there using cadaver dogs and uh, search teams and that sort of thing. And we plan on going back. So after this weather clears. So when you're saying you feel certain that she's deceased, or right. is Kevin the suspect? Yes. In fact, if we don't locate anything this afternoon, we will get a warrant for his arrest for first degree murder. Um, we do that for a couple of reasons, even though we really believe he's 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 somewhere near here uh, and and possibly drowned, uh, just in case. You never know. So we're going to do we're going to cover both bases there. We're going to go ahead and issue the warrant, get him in the NCIC. And that also opens the door for me to reach out to other agencies, such as federal government and state government, because they like to work if there's an active arrest warrant or something. So, and, and I understand all of that. So that's not a problem with that. And that's under the advice of our attorney general here that we should go ahead and do that. So we're going to do that. So I have a lot of uh, advisors, a lot of support groups, uh, every uh, many, many good friends, good people. Hey, with County, it's really giving us a lot of information, a lot of help with this case. We haven't found them. And the nature, he's the ex-husband, is that correct? He is the ex-husband. Uh, they were married about 13 years ago, my, if I recall this correctly. Uh, they the marriage lasts for nine years, and then they, they divorced. And then for the last four years, they've been trying to reconcile and get their marriage back together. But apparently, they ran into a lot of domestic problems and uh, obviously led to this. Have you been in the house? Where they yes, uh, my investigators have been all through the house with the cadaver dogs, with crime scene investigators, deputies, et cetera. We've, we've searched that area thoroughly. But it's a large area. A lot of land around there, a lot of land they had access to, equipment they have access to. Uh, so we, we're just kind of, we have to be thorough. You know, we're going to give it our best. There's been some rumors about him being a taxidermist as well. Is he is. That's what he does on the side. He's also a great diesel mechanic, well respected by many people in Haywood County for his ability to fix diesel engines. And um, the farmers love him. So he's a very smart man, very talented man. And uh, yes, he's a taxidermist. And there's a shop out behind the house where he did all his all of that work. That's been searched too, in case you want to know. Was there anything in that note that uh, you can say indicated what might have led to something happening? Not in the note, no. Uh, in the note, he says, I'm going to make it easy for your guy, you guys. That's one. I'm just trying. I can't tell you everything verbatim, but that's one of the things he said. I'm going to make it easy for you guys. Uh, you know, I think he regretted what he did. He realized he got out of control. I mean, that's, he confided in a friend with this information, and that friend has, has been working with our investigators, so that's how we know a lot of this stuff. And just to clarify, what note are you talking about? There was a note that he left in the truck that was parked out here. He left a note. Uh, he left his cell phone, and he left his hat sitting in his truck. And, uh, and before he did all of that, he was on the phone with his best friend. Is this friend the one that led y'all to this location? Yes, sir. Is there any other information that we're forgetting to ask or anything you feel relevant? No, sir, not at this time. I think I pretty much told you everything I know. Thank you, sir. Yes, ma'am. Good questions. I was just going to ask, has the truck since been seized and taken in for oh, further yes. investigation? Yes, Yeah, so it was by a friend. The friend is the one that ultimately ended up telling the police and, and why they know the information that they do know. And it, so it sounds like basically he hit his breaking point and before he went and did the final deed, he contacted a friend and and just broke broke all the news. He just told them everything, confided just confessed now the only thing that i'm a little bit mm, on is the fact that uh, they're discussing a drowning with him and 
the only way I could really see that being possible, and it, it's likely, right? It, it could happen, is if he had a gun and he were to have, at that point, it wouldn't technically probably be a drowning, um, <clears throat> but it would need him to, you know, and like shoot himself and be standing in the water. And so ultimately he would then fall in the water and then the water would take him wherever it would take him. Uh, because you naturally our bodies don't allow us to drown. They, they will fight, they will resist and our reaction is to live. And so we would actually come back up out of the water. So I don't, I don't know. That one's got me a little bit, um, a little stumped on that. But this is Brittany T. And she is the 35-year-old that has the boyfriend. She had been seen last leaving their house. And so that is who this press conference is going to be about. And I will put you on to the press conference. And then after that, I'm going to play one video uh, just because there was a few things said in it that was of interest. Charge the search, the ongoing search for Brittany T in Brookfield today. What we had is uh, multiple state agencies and local partners coming together. We're getting more and more resources that are helping with, with the search today. And I want, I want to thank some of them. We have the Massachusetts uh, State Police Air Wing who was in the air today doing a flyover, working with Brookfield Police Department, the State Police Emergency Response Team, also known as the CERT Team, the State Police K-9 Unit, Massachusetts Environmental Police, the Department of Conservation and Recreation, State Police Crime Scene Services, the Brookfield Police Department, Brookfield Fire Department, and the State Police Detectives assigned to the Worcester DA's office. We's all, we've also had offers of help from the Worcester Police Department, their cadet, and we're also State Police, we also have the cadet services that we're looking um, to get involved as well. As you, as you can see, there's an awful lot of people involved in this, doing as much as they can to help us find some answers. Also, very importantly, we've had some great tips that have come in, but uh, you know, some people are afraid to give tips because they're not anonymous. Well, we have an anonymous tip line uh, that we'd like to people to call with any information that they might have. And we'd ask you to call at 508-453-7589 this will help our investigators immensely. Again, the anonymous tip line, it can be anonymous to anyone who wants to be. We just want you to call. Don't want you to have any reservations or fears about calling. It's 508-453-7589. Uh, also, everyone who has called in with tips, thank you. Uh, they've helped us insofar as pointing us what we believe in the right direction. These things always, you know, they never have a time timeline they work themselves out slowly but it does allow us to move more quickly when we can eliminate different things and that's what the tips have been doing for us uh again if you got video in your house say, don't say well it couldn't have been her she might not have been out here check your check your video i know people get home from a, a day of work it, it's something that they're not looking exactly to do but it can help us it can help the family it can help the searches it can help everyone involved here um, also check your campus, check your buildings, check your garages, check your sheds, anything that is a spot where a person may look to get out of the elements. Um, just take a look. As a reminder, Brittany was seen last Tuesday on January 10th, leaving a residence on main street in Brookville. She's 35 years old, five foot six, 120 pounds, blue eyes, and was last seen wearing a black winter coat, hoodie, jeans, and work quotes. Uh, that's all pretty much we have for today. I'll take a few questions after the chief speaks. Uh, we're going to let the investigators do their work. They're professionals, and you don't see everything that they're doing. But but, but when I tell you, it, it's amazing the work that they do, the intelligence in, in the um, experience they bring to bear when we have these situations. It's just amazing. It's very uplifting, and it's helpful to the family. Um, again, I, I want to reiterate, uh, it's a search. It's not a crime scene. Um, in Everyone we're talking to has been cooperative. It's not a crime scene. In this search, everyone that we're talking to has been cooperative, and we thank them for that, Chief. Thank you for coming out. Again, I'm Chief Mike Blanchard, Brookfield Police Department. I want to thank everyone that's called in tips so far. Um, I want to remind everyone of the new tip line number to streamline tips, and it's 
800-800-7589. And I continue to encourage people to call in tips as they have them, no matter how big or small they think they may be. Um, I also understand that, that the longer this goes on, the more frustration and, and anxiety builds amongst people. But I want to remind everyone to remain positive, keep Brittany and her family in your thoughts and prayers, and, and continue to hope for a, a safe return to Brittany. And I also want to thank Brookfield Fire Chief for being his well and his men and women who are also given a hand with this. Uh, yeah, do you think she's still in the area here? Do you think she was kidnapped? Um, we, we have nothing, Scott, that would suggest she was kidnapped. We do believe she's in the area. Um, there, there are multiple possibilities. Um, that's why we're asking for help. Again, it's, it's a search. It's not a crime scene. It's a search. Yeah. It's not getting in the way. Anything that they could do, if they see something suspicious, everyone's got a cell phone, pick up your phone, call the, uh, Brookfield Police Department, call the state police tip line. Um, make a quick call. If there's anything that you see at all you think might be helpful, to, I, I, I can't stress it enough. Any little bit of information you might not find relevant, but to the police, it, it just it's it's like a, a puzzle. It keeps building on uh, blocks that are already there to help us get to where we want to be, and that's getting finding Brittany. How much has the search radius expanded by? Uh, I, I think it's up to about three miles now, uh, but it, you know, it, it will get even bigger. Um, anything that. Anything that we need to do with, with regards, they, they need to do with regards to the search they're going to do. We're looking at her cell phone right now. We, we have her cell phone. We have her laptop. Those are the things that we're looking at. We have her car. That's That's been inventoried uh, by the Brookfield Police Department uh, yesterday. Uh, we, so you have cell phone yes. No, no, no. That. No, um, I wasn't involved in the search, but I, I, the search I did witness the other day was going through a car. I think she has a white Jeep, something like that. Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, he is. No, again, Scott, there are no suspects right now. He, um, her boyfriend's been very cooperative with us. Everyone's been very cooperative with us. And, 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 you know, and, and it, that is encouraging. We've been through a lot of these investigations. When you get everyone cooperating, is it a good sign? Yes. In terms of whether or not it's a search or a crime scene. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Listening to the Worcester County DA Joe Early give an update on what investigators have been doing in Brookfield today. Uh, um, right now. Let's just listen to We a do bit not more. have her cell phone. We have her laptop. We do not have her cell phone. Um, and we're looking to get the records on that. Okay? Yeah, well, right now it's part of the investigation. She had the cell phone. She had the cell phone. The cell phone's with her. Okay? Thank you. Okay, DA Joe Early just clarifying way, that one piece of information about Brittany T's cell phone. If you want to be anonymous, they'll be anonymous. All right, thank you, everybody. 35-year-old Brittany T of Brookfield has been missing for a week now. Uh, she was living there with her boyfriend. She was last seen wearing a black winter jacket, hoodie, jeans, and work boots. And Massachusetts State Police expanded their search today in the hopes of trying to find anything that will lead them to finding Brittany. Uh okay, so he said that they're going through the phone. My correction on that is that they're looking to get the records for the phone and go through those, but they don't actually have the phone. But he also then was like, well, she has the phone. Okay, but you also last told us that, that she had the uh, laptop or a tablet or something like that. So I don't, I don't know. I kind of question if he was giving all of the right factual information during that press conference. Um, hmm. And the fact that they say that it's not a crime scene. I don't know, because that's not what it looked like with them going through the back of that car yesterday. But I guess if they thought more into that car, they would have towed that car. 
and I didn't see that they towed up. But they did take pictures in the back, in the trunk. And also that clarified that that's definitely not her vehicle. If this guy was just giving the right information, because he said he believes she has a white Jeep. And that is, they were going through a, a Subaru. So, um, I don't know. All right, I'll play this real quick for you. Investigators have now widened their search for a missing woman in Brookfield. Right now you're getting a live look from Sky Eye as they are searching another mile radius near routes 9 and 148. We want to thank you for joining us here on WBZ. I'm Courtney Cole. 35 year old Brittany T has not been heard from for a week now. WBZ's Christina Hager joins us live in Brookfield where that search is underway. Christina. Yeah, Courtney, there's been a flurry of activity at this address this morning. Uh, this is the home where Brittany T lived with her boyfriend. I knocked on the door here this morning and got no answer. And police told me he is not interested in talking publicly. Apparently, he told them. Now, several detectives went into this home moments ago, and a team of police dressed in black has been searching with a canine uh, in the area around the outside of the property also, including trash barrels behind the home. The state police special emergency response team has been searching through the town of Brookfield this morning. The 35-year-old went missing a week ago. Lee saying she left this home on foot. Her family says she left with her phone, iPad, and wallet and say it's unlike her to be gone for so long without contacting them. She would not leave on purpose this long. Like she always contacted us, no matter what. She's never done. She's never left. She's she's. We've always known where she was. We've always talked to her almost daily. So it's just so out of the norm for her, and that's what scares us. Back here live where searchers are around the property where Brittany and her boyfriend live. Police asked neighbors to check their property and security camera footage. They've also asked hunters to keep an eye out. And this morning, state police said they would be focusing on woods along routes 9 and 148, expanding their search. I also spoke with a close friend of Brittany who was out with a group of other friends this morning in the city of Worcester. They said they've been leaving flyers out at bus stops and checking into homeless shelters just hoping to get the word out and hoping that will lead to a clue. Live in Brookfield, Christina Hager, WBC News. So in that, I thought it was interesting that he said that he did not want to speak publicly. Um, and he, that's completely in his right to not. And as long as he's being cooperative with the police, which they say he is, that's all that really matters. Um, as much as we would like to hear from him, it's he's not obligated to have to do that. It's so, uh, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. It doesn't. It doesn't add up. Something doesn't seem right here at all. I'm sure that we all have that same kind of feeling. So we will see what comes with the search, and same with. Brittany Watson, they said that they're probably going to have to take a break and then pick it back up again um, because of the weather. So that's mm, discouraging. Um, but I will keep you posted on any of the updates that come in. If they do press conferences again, I will I will um, probably go live for you. But I hope that you all have a good one. I'll talk to you all very, very soon. I love you. Bye.